Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Starlos Polymer Lower Receiver. Now, polymer receivers are not a new thing. Uh, there's many battle-proven and battle-proven rifles out there that are made largely a polymer. Uh, you think about the AUG and a few rifles from HK and then there's more out there. They're made out of polyamide polymer, uh, fiberglass filled injection molded nylon plastic. Um, I'm not a chemist, but they're made out of material that's not aluminum and not steel. Uh, and us Americans, we always give those products an eyebrow because all of our rifles have been made out of steel, aluminum, walnut, wood, uh, things of this nature. We you know, came up on rifles that were steel and they had, you know, wood stocks. You look to Europe and polymer became a thing there long before it became a thing here. Uh, and of course there's there's reasons for that when you get into, you know, uh, uh, the actual supply of raw materials and things like that, but this is not a history lesson. Uh, but then we have the curious case of AR-15 um, and I've seen a few AR-10 platform uh, polymer receivers. And of course we give them the eyebrow and the reason for that is, just like I said, we're used to aluminum or steel, mostly aluminum, billet, forged, whatever. The only time I really see these things get popular is when there's a gun scare. If you remember the scare after Sandy Hook, everybody was buying polymer lowers because they couldn't get aluminum or they didn't want to pay the price gouging prices for aluminum. So is a polymer AR-15 lower a bad thing? Like I said, there's already rifles out there made out of polymer that work just fine. So why do we always give these the eyebrow? Well. My personal feeling on it is, this rifle was intended to be made out of metal. Its manufactured tolerances, its measured tolerances, its specs tolerances by design were, des were intended for aluminum or steel, most likely aluminum. So when you take those same tolerances, specifications, measurements, and you put them and try to kind of shoehorn them into a polymer, you can end up with issues. Now, are those issues going to be across the board, every single polymer lower? I don't know because I haven't shot a lot of polymer lowers. Um, and to be perfectly honest, the reason for that is aluminum's out there. I prefer aluminum. Uh, I don't really have the weight issue that some people want this for. Uh, my rifle's not too heavy. Uh, so for me, it's never been a, well, I need to get a polymer lower and I need to go through a bunch of different polymer lowers to see what's best. Uh, but I got this one and I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and, and, and give it the review. Uh, put it through 2,000 rounds. Now. There are some people in the professional community that say all lower receivers are created equal, and there's a bunch of us who say those people are wrong. The reason for that is all lowers are not created equal. Now, a lot of lowers come from the same place, no matter whose roll mark is on them. Uh, don't, don't get confused with the fact that just because it says it's made by X brand or Y brand, that it didn't come off the same line. Uh, the number of houses out there that are able to actually manufacture in-house and produce their own rifles is actually pretty small when you compare it to the number of rifle companies that exist. But when it comes to polymer, they are, from what I understand, a lot easier to manufacture and a lot easier to get into the manufacture of them when it comes to buying the equipment and the materials you need to actually make yourself a firearm. So the Starlos receiver is kind of interesting. Now the interesting thing about the Starlos complete lower receiver package that you get uh, that I haven't seen with some others is almost everything appears to be polymer. The buffer tube is polymer. Obviously the stock's polymer, that's nothing new. Uh, castle nut is metal, back plate is metal, buffer is metal, spring's metal. The detent, polymer. Trigger package, polymer. Safety, polymer. Bolt catch release, polymer. Magazine release, polymer. The only thing I can tell other than that, uh, the, the you know springs and detents are obviously metal. Um, but the majority of your pins, like the roll pin here is aluminum, but your takedown pins are polymer. Uh, all of these things combined to create um, a very, very light package, 25 ounces. If weight is an issue, um, you can't really go wrong with 25 ounces for a complete lower receiver. Now, obviously, if you change out the stock or, or the pistol grip, then that might add a little weight or you even shave more weight. 
Um, but as far as weight savings goes, that's definitely, you know, if that was your idea, you're definitely going to hit the mark with something like this. But if everything is polymer, is there going to be any issues with it? Well, in doing the review, obviously this isn't a rifle. It's just the lower receiver. So we're not looking at accuracy. Uh, it's very hard for the lower receiver unless you just have a really, really bad trigger group to affect accuracy. So all we're really looking for is durability, spec and reliability, and the trigger. Now for spec and reliability, I just want to make sure the magazine well functions as intended. Uh, through the course of 2,000 rounds, I'm just going to reload. It's going to occur naturally. I'm not going to force it. I use as many different kinds of magazines as I can. Uh, I've got, you know, hex mags. I've got P mags. I've got, I think I've got a Lancer. I've got an HK. I've got ETS. Uh, I've got straight up USGI and I've got HK steel magazines. All the magazines are going to come in and out of the gun. And as far as the spec and reliability went, um, it worked, worked fine. Magazines drop free when they should drop free. Now, when the rifle gets a little bit dirty or the magazines got some, you know, got some dirt on them because I've dropped them on the ground and reloaded them a few times, they might stick a little bit, but I didn't encounter any significant issue where the magazine just didn't want to come out of the lower receiver. Now, another big concern when it comes to the magazine well with spec and reliability or with just polymer lowers in general is, is there going to be any undue flex in this? Uh, I've handled one polymer receiver at a gun show, cannot remember the make of it, but I was able to visibly cause flex in the magazine well. As you can see with this Starlos, not able to do that. Um, I did stand on it, which is kind of unrealistic, but I just wanted to see if I could, you know, cause it to take a shape to where the magazines wouldn't work. Not an issue. Uh, so as far as the magazine well goes in, in regards to being made out of polymer and that being an issue, maybe it's going to get hot and it's going to it's going to bend or it's going to warp or it's going to distort. I did not experience that issue during the 2000 round review process. Now, my first durability test on any firearms review is the burn down. Uh, 500 rounds, as fast as possible, comes out to be about you know 16 plus magazines, so 17 magazines. Um, the polymer, or I should say, lower receivers in general in the AR platform, they're not going to take they're not going to take a lot of heat. Most of the heat is going to be maintained in the barrel, the gas block, the chamber, bolt carrier group, and those areas. A lot of the heat is not going to make it back into the lower receiver. But you know, I'm going to do the burn down anyway. The one thing I was looking for during the burn down is where the front takedown pin is. That's right next to the barrel nut. And the barrel nut does take a lot of heat for those of you who burnt yourself know. So I wanted to see if 500 rounds getting that rifle up to five, 600 degrees barrel nut into the same temp was going to cause any issues right there at that front takedown pin. Pen broke. Not a huge deal, but still bothers me. Let's see. That's after 500 rounds. Let's see what the temp's like. Obviously, not nearly as much heat gets induced into the lower as you are going to have on the upper, uh, because that's where all the explosions happen. But, I would say, more than the heat, 500 rounds, whether you did it as fast as I did, or you did it two or three range trips at a time, we obviously had some issues with the rear buffer. Um, it came loose. We'll go ahead and fix that and continue the review. So, first magazine out of the gun after the burn down, 30 rounds, let's see how it goes.
So, 500 rounds, no malfunctions, except for the buffer tube. The rifle fired all 500 rounds without any issue. But one thing I noticed, uh, as you saw, is the castle nut came loose, which allowed the back plate to walk out, which allowed me to lose my detent, which allowed me to pull out the rear roll pin. Uh, detent spring gone. Um, I don't necessarily know what caused that issue, but I have a theory. One of the theories is maybe the castle nut wasn't as tight as it should have been, uh, and it's definitely something I could have checked. Uh, two is it's aluminum on plastic. Now, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a metallurgist, I'm not a chemist, but I do know that when you take two different materials and you put them together, something's going to give. Uh, steel on steel, aluminum on aluminum, aluminum on steel, plastic on steel, they can create issues. Definitely some Loctite could have prevented that, uh, some other issues. Was it a catastrophic failure? As you saw, it wasn't. I didn't even notice until after the 500 rounds had been fired, but that's definitely a cause of concern for me. Um, going into it, I, I don't really see an issue. You know, you can tighten it down um, and, you know, maintain checks on it, uh, but that was something that bothered me a little bit. Now, the, the trigger group is polymer. Uh, the only thing in there is the springs. Springs are metal, obviously. Uh, but trigger group itself, how did I like the trigger? Uh, I actually like the trigger a lot. For what I would consider like a two-stage mil-spec-ish uh, trigger package, I really, actually, that was my favorite part about the low receiver. The trigger is actually really nice for just a standard run-of-the-mill OEM from the factory trigger. Uh, it's got a little more pre-travel than I would like, but reset is really crisp and clean, and the trigger's super light because it's made out of polymer. Now granted, how much lighter is it than an aluminum? Well, they quote it as 2.6 ounces. You can check out your trigger and see if it weighs more or less. I mean, that's gonna be an individual issue, but it definitely weighs less than your standard mil spec package. And if you like to run a gun fast, a light trigger can help you depending on your shooting style. So as far as the trigger went, it's consistent, it's clean. Uh, it, there's no wobble in the trigger well, and it reset consistently, like I said, every single time. Uh, and over 2,000 rounds, even when I did the burn down, I didn't have any issues with the trigger package at all. Favorite part. Another concern of mine, uh, and it's a concern on any rifle system, AR platform, um, but more so on something made out of polymer, is when we talk about polymer buffer tube combined with some aluminum parts here and there, and then uh, a polymer stock, mortaring. Mortaring is a technique that is done to clear a very specific type of malfunction, and it's a technique that's done to clear that malfunction by people who don't know a better way to do it. Um, the idea behind mortaring is it's going to deliver shock force to the bolt carrier group to help free a stuck casing in the chamber, or, or to assist in clearing a bolt override or a brass over bolt malfunction. So what people will do is they will literally, as I'll show you, they'll mortar the rifle. Um, the correct way to mortar is to collapse the stock in and have your impact be on the very rear of the buffer tube versus the toe. You want it on the heel. Um, I don't teach mortaring uh, because when it comes to a bolt override, there's a much better way to clear that malfunction. But since people are going to do it because they may not know about the better way to do it, hopefully uh, they get out there and, and find out or I can obviously address it in a video in the future. Mortaring can cause damage to the rifle. Now. What we're worried about with polymer receivers is this area right here. We don't want this to suffer any breaks, bends, or any kind of distortion or warp or set or take a different form or whatever. And obviously with a polymer buffer tube, we're concerned with breaking that or bending that. And obviously we're concerned with any kind of other damage it can uh, be caused, like maybe even break the detent. The detent's made out of polymer, so it was definitely a worry. So I went ahead and just mortared the shit out of this thing. After mortaring, uh, functions check, ran some bullets through it, and identified an issue.
that's obviously an issue. Now, trying to troubleshoot the problem, as you can see, aside from being a little bit dirty down here, there's nothing wrong, at least in appearance-wise, with the, uh, the buffer tube. So maybe the problem lies with the stock. Now, looking in the stock, you can see that the tab or the tooth or whatever you want to call it, the actual adjustment indexing point is still there, still functional. It just doesn't seem to have enough spring tension to maintain its locked position on recoil or any kind of sudden impact. So as you can see, the rifle basically created its, created an issue where it would just collapse itself, which is something I definitely don't want. Uh, I want to choose a position knowledgeably, and I want the rifle to stay there until I choose otherwise. Now, I tried to diagnose the issue on camera, wasn't able to. Uh, what I did do after that was I completely disassembled the rear stock. I took the entire mechanism apart and reassembled it, and now it's functioning again. I was not able to actually troubleshoot the specific cause of the malfunction, but disassembly and reassembly of the stock did fix it. Uh, one issue is you got to make sure you got to make sure it, it actually dials in and locks in. Otherwise, it's going to do it again. So, final verdict. Um, I mean, you guys saw the review. It shoots. It. it uh, I definitely noticed more recoil because it's lighter, and that's not something I like. This is not something I'm going to use. Not something I want. Uh, that being said, if you want light. This isn't a bad way to go, but there were just too many inconsistent issues that I experienced in the review process for me to really even say, hey, this isn't bad. Uh, I think the idea is sound once they improve and get the kind of balance right with the with the, the actual, I guess you'd say, recipe of the polymide or the, the, the polymer that they're going to use. But it comes back to this originally being intended to be made out of aluminum and then someone trying to make it out of a different material and meet the same specifications. Now, engineers and people who build things will argue till you know their last breath that polymer can be just as strong as aluminum. And I'm not gonna debate that because they're more qualified than I am to speak on materials. What I will say is there's nothing wrong with aluminum. Polymer is gonna be cheaper and that's great. I, if somebody asked me, hey, would you recommend a polymer lower for anything? And my answer would be, yeah, hobby gun. Uh, it's not something I'm gonna use for self-defense. It's certainly not something I'm gonna use for duty because they're just too, too many potential failure points that you don't see with aluminum. So if cost is an issue and you just want a hobby gun, a bench rest gun, there's nothing wrong with polymer receivers. This is a really good choice for that. Um, I would actually take the trigger package out of this and throw it in an aluminum gun. I like it that much. But as a complete package, I just worry about the failure points, potential failure points that I do not experience with the same platform in aluminum. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly. I should probably put the safety on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, somebody's going to be watching the video and be like, oh, it was great, you know, I really enjoyed it. But, you know, you were staying up the whole time and the safety wasn't on. So.